Hello everybody, welcome to today's IEP Live Learn Lunch. We're very excited today to be joined by Jane Knight, one of the fellows of the IEP um, and also founder of Successful Mums Career Academy, who's going to talk to us about a, a topic um, dear to my own heart, which is about mums returning to the workplace and, and making sure that we have um, access to work and to the labour market. Um, Jane is, uh, well, the, the Career Academy, she's gonna tell you more about it herself in a moment, but she founded the Career Academy about 10 years ago, and since then has helped over 7,000 mums back into work. So some great work going on there. Um, and this is done through building confidence and, and a variety of interventions. So I think I'm gonna leave the rest to you to tell them, Jane, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really looking forward to this session. Jane, over to you. Thank you, Helen. Um, thanks for inviting me. Thanks to you, Scott and Tracy, as well, um, for inviting me along. And it's lovely to see you all. And a shout out to the Isle of Wight and Jeanette. Um, the Isle of Wight is on my list for this year, Jeanette, so I'm, I might be asking you the best places, the best places to go. So, um, as we've just mentioned, Successful Mums Career Academy, I set the business up after having my, my son um, about 10 years ago. And I Nobody told me how difficult it was when you become a parent or a mother. Um, it's the hardest job in the world. And I, I struggled to find part time work. I'm a, a teacher and career advisor. And I, I just felt that I didn't want other mums to experience this. And when I was was looking for organisations that could help me, I just at the time I couldn't find anybody. So I created the academy really with the, the vision to help 100 mums um, back into work. So those, those of you that are on the call that are parents or carers, you will know what a tricky job it can be. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very hard job too. So before we, before we go through the slides, um, can we just, I, I think we could quite easily get 20 transferable skills from being a mum or a dad or a carer that you could take into the workplace and use in in the workforce. So I'm going to start with my first my first transferable skill. Um, I've got two children now, so it's conflict management, which is something I've got so much better at since becoming a mum. So could we have some more transferable skills, please, in, in the chat? And if we can call if if we can call those out, Helen, that would be really useful. Absolutely. And it's going crazy already. We've got organizational skills, negotiation, budgeting budgeting diary planning meal planning yeah. uh, time management uh multitasking challenging behavior dealing with challenging behavior resilience prioritizing tasks well, they just keep coming through and everyone i think yep yep that sounds familiar so there's so many things julia says patience sorry i haven't read any of the names out you were all too fast for me to read the the, the skill and the name jeanette says resourcefulness so yeah, they, they, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? Prioritizing tasks, any more? Oh, diplomacy. Creativity, says Shannon. Sense so of humor. This I don't is, know if we're near 20, it feels like we're near 20. I but, think uh, this is a real example of when, when I meet these women and they say to me, I'm just a mum, I really just want to show them this list. I mean, in under 30 seconds, we've probably got at least 10 transferable skills. So why are people not talking about this at interview? Why are not people saying in the playground, I'm a mum rather than I'm just a mum? You know, it's really about understanding that the work you do as a parent is so important and it can be used in business, it can be used in the workplace if you're working for yourself. So it's something I think we should really embrace um, rather than suddenly think, you know, if you have a career break, you're, you're not doing anything because um, everybody on the call, if you're a parent or a carer, you will know we are doing a lot. We're certainly not sitting on the sofa with our feet up um, at all. So I just wanted to sort of demonstrate that, that, short, that short exercise. And one, actually, that we, I don't think we did mention, um, there's a woman, a woman that I've been working with recently, and she wanted to go to 
for an um, she's got triplets and she wanted to go for an events management role and she said she had no experience her children are now I think they're 15 so she has organized 15 birthday parties where the kids were happy the parents were happy there were no peanuts and that is just an example of somebody not recognizing the skill set they have she has organized so many birthday parties and that is event management so let's crack on through the slides. Um, please do ask any questions if you have any, and please do let me know if you think of any other transferable skills, because I'm always adding to my list. Um, my favorite two are still the conflict management and the negotiation, because they are things that I just thought I'd always, you know, have control of. And it's something that you certainly, you learn to master as, as your children get older. So all of the pictures on the slides today are of real mums. These are real women that have come to the academy and we've supported them, we've held their hand and we've found them employment. Um, so we've touched on um, about the, the organisation. We provide career advice and back to work training. Um, what I've done is I've listened in the last decade to the barriers these women face. And then I've made sure that all of those barriers we provide solutions for in the training that we offer. And, you know, I, I can't take all the credit at all. Um, one, I've got a fantastic team. And secondly, bringing women together and them understanding that they are not the only person that feels isolated, feels that they've lost their confidence. If you bring these women together, just talking to other people is just a great confidence booster. So... We run a lot of networking events, um, but the main thing we do is we take women from where they are at the point of wanting to go back to work. We take them through an accredited confidence and back to work course. We cover things such as CVs, LinkedIn profiles, but we also do things like NLP training, um, personal styling. A lot of these women are saying, oh, I'm a different shape to what I used to be before I had children. I haven't got an interview suit. So rather than um be fed up about that we talk to the women around you know accept you're now in this new exciting chapter in your life so maybe your body shape for example has changed but that's fine we provide personal styling to ensure these women are then dressing in a way that suits their new style and suits their new body we also cover a growth mindset some of you that might be fans of um positive thinking and some of the TED talks will know about growth mindset and, and how it's really important to stay positive. So all of our training includes TED talks. Um, we also cover um, a range of recruitment agencies that are out there specifically to support mums. And we also offer links to local employers as well. So it's a real holistic um, training program along with us providing structure around the CV support, the digital skills and the different careers that people can go to. We're really fortunate that we actually have funding from the London Mayor so none of these women are having to pay for the course if they meet the eligibility and my goal was to help 100 mums um, back in I think it was 2013, 2014 and as Helen touched on we've now supported 7,000 and that's down to these women just recognising what they're actually capable of and my fantastic team as well. So we are like a school, um, but it's just we're a school for mums. So, you know, we're privy to Ofsted um, and we are funded by a number of training organisations and colleges. So the, the main barriers that these women have, you know, I, I mentioned the data. So we've got a huge amount of intel why these women don't go back to work. And the consequence if they don't go back to work is they are... Um, not earning money, they're not contributing to the, the economy in terms of tax, they are not supporting their own aspirations and in turn their children's aspirations as well. Some of these women might be doing jobs that they are overskilled for. So a lot of the women we, we work with might be on the brink of going to work in Asda or Waitrose, stacking shelves in the evening. And that is fine and that is a valid job. But if they have got additional skills and qualifications, they are then taking that role off of somebody else. So it's about, you know, what they want to do in this chapter. And a lot of the women that work with us, they might have had a quite senior role before, but they don't want to go back to that. They want a more local job. They might not want the responsibility. So it's all about what does that woman want in this chapter in her life? So the three main barriers that we find is confidence, career advice and childcare. Quite simple, but these are the, these are the things that are holding these women 
back from going into work. So in terms of confidence, um, we've touched on this earlier. I'm just a mum. I've got nothing to offer from the transferable skills we've touched on. Um, those skills should be on one CV. Um, they also should be discussed at interview, I believe. And um, employers should be embracing the whole person and not just, you know, the work experience they might have done before. So we talk to the mums around how they can confidently have that information on their CV. It's written in a professional way and they can also discuss that at interview. Career advice. Some of these women just don't know where to start. We've been working with a barrister recently. So she's had a senior role before. You know, she's she used to have a very responsible job, but she doesn't want to do that since having her children. So in her eyes, what else could she do? That's all she's ever known. So we're actually we've supported her to do her assessing qualification, which some of you will be familiar with. And now she is assessing um, law apprentices. And that's just a role that she didn't know existed. And she could cross some of the, her previous experience into that. And OK, she's not at the bar. She's not earning the same package she was when she was a barrister, but she's still doing something she loves and it fits in around her children. So I think it's around exposing these women to different careers. And those of you that are fellows and work in education, you'll know there's a host of exciting industries out there that are crying out for staff, are prepared to retrain people. And that's where these women returners just can fit in so well. Not only have they got their previous work experience, They've got life experience and, of course, they've got the TS, the transferable skills from, from being a mum. There's, um, you know, there's a real demand if you think about health and social care. And we will talk to the women around. It's not just about personal care. Some people might start personal care and they can work their way up to be a nurse. Some people might start with personal care and they will stay there or they might go into training. There's so many different routes in. And we're really lucky that we get to work with forward thinking employers where we run joint webinars. So we work with Coca-Cola, we work with Pearson's, um, we work with St. James's Place. We also work with smaller, more local organisations that want to reach out to these mums and they just don't know how to do it. So I will run a, a joint webinar with, um, let's say, Pearson's, for example. I'm able to bring all of my audience of mums to the webinar, and then Pearson's have a, has a platform to talk to these women about the many flexible and part-time opportunities. So it's a really great fit and quite a simple model. And childcare, of course, and understandably, lots of the mums that come to us, if they've got small children, they don't necessarily want to leave their children, um, or they don't, or they think they can't afford any childcare. So we explain the different opportunities, and we work with organisations such as Pacey. Um, other companies that provide childcare and can provide advice on the, the free childcare once the, the child gets to a certain age. So we're, we're providing career advice and also childcare advice and confidence. These, these three sort of prongs to then lead a real pathway for these, these women to take their career forward. Um, and, you know, once, once we provide that, along with the training that we can offer, there's a real clear, I suppose what we're doing is we're giving, giving clarity about what they can do. And something we do ask is um, we use quite a lot of positive thinking, NLP and powerful questions. So, in fact, I'll, I'll, ask, um, I'll ask this to you now. So, Helen, what is the date today? Oh, it's the, um, I'm going to have to think about this, 27th of July. Okay, so it's the 27th of July, 2023. And let's pretend we're back on this webinar. So everybody on this, this webinar, if we all met again in exactly a year's time, what would you like to have achieved in the next 52 weeks? And it might be that you say, nothing, I'm fine as I am. I don't want to achieve anything else. It's cool. Or you might say, well, actually, I'd really like to be promoted. I'd really like to learn to become a social media consultant. In fact, I've always thought about retraining as a midwife, but I've never done anything about it. Or you might say, oh, in a year's time, I would have run the London Marathon. So is there anything that you would like to do that you want to, you're brave enough to put in the chat? My, well, bear in mind, this has been recording, recorded. So we, that's it. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking. I was, I was the evidence. 
Yeah, I was going to say something straight away, and I thought, hang on a second. Yeah, please do, please do. Um, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? Because I've been listening to this. I'm just giving people some time to, to pop their thoughts in chat. I was really lucky when I went on maternity leave because my line manager was pregnant at the same time as me. And she she found a part time role for me to come back to mainly working from home, very flexible. And she was amazing. And so that really made it very easy for me and it's not the same for everyone and so this this is why this is close to my heart because I still work on a part-time basis now but I've been very fortunate in employers and you know you're mentioning the childcare element I was terrible about leaving my daughter with anyone so you know it's not just having it available it's having something available that you're comfortable to use isn't it um but we are starting to get some some responses through there so um Penny's per possibly to be able to work fewer hours. That sounds amazing, Penny. So Penny, that's that does sound good, but I don't like the work possibly. Penny, we need to have work fewer hours because then the smarter that can be, the more likely you are to do that. So I wonder, um, Penny, let's hook up in a year's time and see if, if that's happened. And what does fewer hours mean? Do you want to work one hour a week less or 10 hours a week? week less so I think you know once a bit like with the women and the audience we support once they say oh I want to work part-time we might say what does that look like 32 hours or 20 hours and you know nothing is set in stone but I think the more um, and you guys will know the more specific you can be around what you want to achieve then the more likely you'll you'll do it because there's a real clear goal um, and at successful mums we hold our mums accountable and we don't even though we give them a virtual hug, at the same time, we, we say to them, right, you need to make it happen. And are you going to use excuses or are you going to actually make it, make it genuinely happen? Because if that's something somebody really wants to do, then, then they will, they will follow, follow that, that through. That's, that's um, a really good point. Now, Jeanette has put, here's an interesting one, take part in the Island Open Studios event. Right, but I don't really know what that means, but it does I sound don't either. We may have to unmute Jeanette if she's happy to and find out. Um, if you're happy to, pop in the chat, Jeanette. Now, Penny has responded saying, I'm not sure what that looks like as the project okay. I'm working on has no more funding. So for her, I guess there's some things that need to happen um, before she can understand what that looks like. Um, but let's, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes you do need to, don't you, to have that confidence, understand the whole picture. But um, Jeanette, are you still there? Are you happy to be unmuted? I'll uh, just pop that there and see if she joins us. Oh, okay, she can't talk at the moment. She says Open Studios is an arts event. That sounds fantastic. That sounds like a great event. Okay, art. so Jeanette, you're going to take part in that. That would be great. So do let us know. I mean, seriously, if you can let us know in a year's time, that would be fab. And I think for, for Penny, um, there will always be other factors. And the other thing, of course, is life. That gets in the way, doesn't it? And sometimes life changes. Um, there's elderly parents involved. There's children involved. There's relationships. There's change of jobs. Um, there's pandemics. So there's lots of things. That, that can affect but if you do know where you want to be I just think you're more likely to to get there and having that date if we know on the 27th of July 2023 we all know we've got 52 weeks we've got what 375 days um I think I did work it out in hours once but I can't remember now um I think for me and, and we've got another example I'll read it in a moment but I think for me I can think of ones not necessarily for myself and maybe this is a sign of being a mum isn't it I've straight away I thought well what do I want to support my daughter with and what do I want to support my team with so my, my team I want to get my team do some more CPD with them help them develop themselves in the way that they want to and get the qualifications they want to get for my daughter she's coming up on sitting her 11 plus so I want to support her in achieving what she wants to support there so and that's quite a mum thing to do isn't it to think about other people rather than yourself so maybe I need to refocus on what I want to achieve for me as well so Shannon has said I went into teaching so that I didn't have to rely on anyone in holidays but it turned out I really enjoyed it if I'd done things differently I would have to create more of a social network okay that's an interesting point and that's key isn't it for for parents yeah definitely 
Um, and Julie has put, I am an employment advisor and I really want to overcome the fear of my participants putting their children into ch childcare, especially in the holidays. And Julie, I completely empathise, as I said, you know, when I returned to work, I was exactly the same after my maternity. The thought of leaving my daughter with someone I found really difficult to, to do. I had terrible guilt about doing it. I don't know. And I look back now and I can see all the things that people told me about it being good for her and all of those things were right. And I'm glad I listened to them. But at the time, it felt like I was going and, and, and you know. And I think for a lot of our mums, they're, they're nervous about leaving their child. But in fact, we all know, maybe we don't like to admit it. I know I didn't, but I think my children gained so much when they went to nursery. Um, and I know sometimes I'd, I'd postpone or I'd move a meeting and I'd go and collect my son or my daughter and they'd like why are you here so early and I'd be like oh okay and so you know they you know they build relationships don't they and they have fun and I think somebody else is is giving your child something that you might not be able to so I mean we know that when your child's older but at the time it does feel like um you know you're just handing these little ones over and it can be quite daunting so um but the employment advisor um yeah well that's a that's a great role isn't it I um, I think supporting people into work, I mean, it's the key of what we, we do. So, um, yeah, no, I understand that one, Julie. And, and Shannon, just going back to the teaching, um, the support network, you could still do that, couldn't you? Maybe that's something you could continue to work on. I mean, I don't know if your children are a bit old and you don't need it quite as much now, but your network is ab absolutely key, isn't it? Oh, your son's 25. <laughs> oh, so maybe he doesn't need looking after quite as much. My little boy's on scout camp this week and I've really missed him and I, I can't imagine him, um, well, it will happen. He will go on holidays and I won't see him for a long time. So it's a, a strange thing, isn't it? Oh, and he does need looking after. I think they probably all do, don't they, for, for a long time. So um, just going back to a year's time, this is something we, a strategy we use with our mums and they just love it because I think it, it just really gives them some clarity around what they want to do and we do speak to them in a year and say, how are you getting on? And at the moment, we're actually working at 61% of the women we support find work, which, I mean, I'd love it to be 100%, but that's not realistic. And those of you that work in education know that 61% is quite a good, good benchmark that we're, we're working at, because a lot of the women we work, remember, I mentioned a barrister, but we also work with people that have never worked at all. We have people that have come through the job centre and might um, have additional barriers. Um, I mean, that can be the case for all people, not just people through the job centre. We work with women that have just come out of prison. We work with women that might have been in domestic violence situations. So we do a lot around safeguarding. But regardless of people's backgrounds, that you know, they've they all bond together because basically they've had a child and they've lost their mojo. So we are here, here to help these women get their mojo back. So just moving on to the next slide. So I just wanted to talk to you really because as an employer, there's some really simple things you can do to, to open your doors and, and give these women a virtual hug and encourage them to work for your organisation. So I suppose for the women that are going back to the same company, I think this still applies because when I did a survey, and if, if anybody, of, anybody on the call wants me to share the um, data that I have from the last um, seven to eight years, or if they want me to share a recent survey that I did, um, then I'm more than happy to, to send that information out. The more people it can help, the better. And one of the feedback from the survey, the feedback point was those people that go back to the same employer, they still want to be introduced to the staff, reintroduced. They still want to understand the systems because they can feel as if they've been at the workplace a long time, even if it might only be nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months. So they'd want that sort of onboarding again, which is really important. But for those of you that want to attract the skilled women returners, make sure you're being inclusive, um, be clear on your flexible and hybrid working policies, uh, make sure you offer this and it's on all of your adverts that you offer flexible working. Um, do offer career progression. Don't think just because somebody might have come back off mat leave that they now just don't want to have a career if it can work for the business, which is really important. And I would like to stress, I don't go around saying you have to take on mums, you have to take on 
um, people flexibly because it might not be the right fit. But if it is a good fit, then I think it, it can be great for everybody involved. And many of the women that we work with, they find a job and they want to continue to learn new skills. We're also able to provide employers with a flexible working policy, but also a perimenopause and menopause policy. So those of you that um, might have women working for you that are midlife, which can be anything from sort of 35 to 50 to 55, then we can offer menopause resources and policies, which has just been, it's been received so well, not only from mid, middle, midlife mums, but also from men that have said they've been able to then talk to their partners about it, from young people that have said they've been able to talk to their mum about it, and siblings as well. So, you know, considering half the population are women and will go through the perimenopause and then the menopause, I think it's important we're talking about it. I think um, yeah, it's really interesting you should say that, Jane, because I think these tips, although they, they're towards an employer, we can use them as employability practitioners could use them as well in conversations with employers and thinking about it. Um, but I, I found myself having a conversation around perimenopause and menopause with my line manager, who is Scott. And at one point I was like, this is quite surreal. I'm talking to a, a guy about this. And then I thought exactly what you just said. It's ridiculous to think that you shouldn't. We're half the population. Everyone go, you know, all females go through it at that you know, stage in life. You should be able to talk about it. And I think it really demonstrates great working culture when you're in an organization that can. Um, but it's it's there is support needed for women in those areas and employers as to how to deal with them. So these policies sound great. And one example, we're working with an employer in Merton and he had a member of staff that was coming into work late and he said she just wasn't being very productive. Um, we introduced the menopause policy. He put it on the team meeting agenda. She was then confident to approach him and said, I'm not sleeping because I, I'm menop going through the menopause. Um, therefore, I'm getting up late and I just don't feel supported. I feel really, you know, I'm having lots of symptoms. He then um, said that she could come in 90 minutes later. Um, he bought her a weighted blanket, which is one of the things that's meant to be good for sleeping, and also provided her with some magnesium tablets, which is another um, potential solution for people that are going through the menopause. So he took on board the resource pack that we have. Um, she, I think the main thing, she felt supported by her employer. So she had this new lease of life. She was sleeping better. She was coming in a bit later as well. And the whole, those, you know, those small practical steps made such a difference. And she, she felt so much better. She was then being productive in the workplace. And prior to that, to him introducing that, he was going to take her through a disciplinary and sack her. I mean, goodness, that's not nice for that individual. It's not good for business. So that's just an example. And we've got lots of those where organisations have just started talking about it. And where could practitioners, the practitioners who are maybe supporting women who are trying to return to the labour market but having these issues, where might they find some of these policies? Are the resources online that they could access? Well, if they email me, then I can talk to them. So it's part of a GLA project. So we've been given funding from the mayor to engage with, um, in, the, in the tender, I think it's forward thinking employers that want to work with, um, want to reach out to women with returners and support them. So I'm part of a project called the Parenting Project. I'm on, it's a company called 3SC that fund it. I'm one of the partners. I also work closely with, um, some of you might know Liz, she's great from Bellina Grow. I also yeah. work with um, Sook from The Right Time. So, you know, we, we have all got this funding and we're able to work with employers to, to help them. So if any of you are interested in this, um, do email me. So I'm Jane at successfulmums.co.uk and let me know where you're based. And then it could be that successful mums can support you. Or if we can't, then I can connect you with um, Liz or Sook that would be happy to help you as well. But the other thing that we can do, which has been um, the real sort of gold dust, is we can advertise any vacancies you might have on our job board. And it's no cost at all. We will just send you the CVs. So if you know anybody that's um, recruiting at the moment, then you know, get in touch. We can advertise, and we've got we've got a database of about seven thousand mums, and we've got a social media following altogether of probably about ten, twelve thousand. So you know, do follow us on Insta, 
Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Um, we've also got a YouTube presence. So you'll, you'll sort of see how we work um, and the, the women that we support. We've got lots of case studies on our on our website as well. But going just briefly going back to the menopause, um, Helen, I know we talked about possibly doing a, a webinar to sort of just talk about some of the resources and the examples. So if that's something you're interested in, do email me, but chat to Helen as definitely. well. Yeah, we'll definitely take you up on that. It, it's a question I get asked quite a lot by our practitioners, so that would be amazing. Um, I know that we've had a couple of comments before we go on to point six, because I think that's really interesting. And I have a question around point six. Um, Shannon has commented and said, I think if uh, the menopause was more understood, um, then employers can understand the symptoms such as bouts of tiredness, etc. So really, it's a really welcome um, change to, to practice. Um, and Louisa has said, are your services free for all mums on benefits or does it depend on where they live? OK, so just picking up on Shannon's point, um, part of what we're doing in terms of the policies and the resources, we're talking to the employers about how they can cascade this information um, and break down boundaries. Because I think years ago it was like, oh, um, I don't know, Deirdre's having a hot flush in the corner and people would just chuckle about it. Um, but it, you know, that shouldn't be the way. And I mean, humour is one of the best things in life. I'm not suggesting we get so hung up on on this. But by the same token, if Deirdre is feeling really hot, let's open a window. Let's provide cold water because that might be the difference. And I don't really know why I've said the word Deirdre because that does make Deirdre sound quite um, quite elderly. Deirdre yeah. could be could only be 47, which is you know. Now I've reached that age, is quite a young age. I was thinking of Deirdre out of Coronation Street. Yes, now, yeah. She's probably old now, but when I think of her, I think of her as young. But actually, it's like you say, I mean, hot flushes are, are maybe something that you think is a bit funny until you experience one. And they're really not funny at all, are they, when, when you're going through them? So one, one out of 10 women will actually leave the workplace because they won't know where to turn. They go to their doctors, they go um, potentially um, be on antidepressants, which have their place. Place. but if there's if there's another way if an employer can say look let's let's meet tell me what I can do to make your life easier surely it's a reasonable adjustment because if somebody was dyslexic if somebody was pregnant if somebody had a um a hearing you know it was hard of hearing the employer would do something so to me this is just an extension of those what can we do to make your life easier um, and I think just spreading the word, talking about it, not only helps employees, but goodness, I think it helps people at home because the example of this gentleman um, that helped his employee, he said he went home and he talked to his wife about it and he said he'd never spoken to his wife about it, yet it was something she was going through. And I mean, that just gives me goosebumps, really. Um, it's just so, so important. Shannon, did you want to say something? Yes, I'll just um, allow Shannon to unmute. Uh, there you go. Should that not be? Oh, there, we, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, about, about the hot flushes thing. Um, I've been having those for a couple of years. And when, you know, it's, it's, I suppose it's slightly different when you're just on camera. I don't think people notice as much, but when I was teaching, um, students, especially when you're working with teenagers, they would always think it was because you were nervous or something like that, especially if it creeps up on your neck, you know? Um, and it, it did affect my confidence. It's not the reason I left teaching, to be honest, but because I moved into L&D, but, um, but yeah, it was, it, it, it ruined my day <laughs> quite a few times. And Shannon, I think it's probably an opportunity if people feel happy to is explain what's happening, because I think really they should be talking about it in schools as well. I mean, we all know as teenagers, your hormones change and we we accept that, don't we? We say all teenagers, but it's, it's just another chapter in our life where we've we're, we've got these hormones that in turn we might not be covered in, you know, spots and I was going to say be a bit moody, we might be a bit, a bit moody, but we also, it's, it's just a different chemical reaction, a different symptom. So I know that some of the training we're doing is where we're talking to practitioners or particularly sort of teachers around if there is a symptom or if they do feel dizzy or in your case, Shannon, what you're saying about feeling red, it's saying, oh, just give me a minute. This is what's happened because surely most people as an audience, regardless of their age, 
even if there might be giggles, they should then be somewhat understanding and we're educating them as well. Yeah. Um, so it's around, this is what's happening to me. It might be happening to somebody you know or you care about. And, and then I just think it's a really sort of practical way, even though it's not particularly nice for, you know, the individual who's experiencing it, something good that can come from it is if you're you're sharing what, what's happening in a positive way rather than ignoring it. And also, as you touched on, Shannon, people thinking you're nervous when it's it's not that at all. So it's it's being sort of clear around what's happening and, and a bit like autism. And we haven't got time to talk about that today, but we've started providing autism awareness training because one of the barriers was our mums that have got children with additional needs, including autism, you need to be talking about it. A bit like the menopause, let's talk about it um, because it's part of life. Um, Definitely. So thank you, Shannon, for, for that, so that for, good point. So before we go on then to point six, um, Louisa did ask, are your services free for all mums on benefits or does it depend on where they live? Yep, so the, all the courses are completely funded if they live in a London borough. So at the moment, we have got funding for all London boroughs, um we have actually well i'm saying with that we've, we're just waiting to hear on our, sep our september funding um we, we we were very fortunate that we used all of our places um we've had, we've got a waiting list of 130 mums at the moment but we are working with a couple of organizations that um are we're hoping are going to fund from september um, but we are looking for Kent funding, actually. So if there is anybody on the call that knows how we can access Kent funding, um, because out of those 130, about 50 of those women are from Kent and they're keen to do our courses. But at the moment, we don't have any Kent funding. But in answer to your question, um, the as of September, all of our courses are fully funded um, if they live in a London borough. And they don't all have to be on benefits as well. If they are just not working, um, then they can sign a self-declaration to say that they're not working um, and we can take them through our, our confidence and back to work course. So do is there anywhere that people could contact for the rest of the UK? Is there anything in place anywhere else in the UK that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I suppose you could say, you know, you could go to a local college because a college um, would provide, you know, back to work support. But I suppose what we're doing is um, all of the training materials are on our learning platform and I've designed them all for mums. So even though they adhere to off-qual um, requirements, all of the um, awarding organisations, so, you know, Gateway, NCFE, they have all confirmed that how we've um, coated all of the materials is absolutely fine because I wanted it to be relatable to mums. Because yeah. th those of you on the call, you will know, you know, if depending on what learning resources you use sometimes it can be quite standard which is fine but I just wanted to make sure it was really engaging for our mums so I don't know any other organizations that do that but of course our the back to work courses and we also run enterprise courses to help women start up their own business we run digital courses we're running a women's well-being and, and menopause course I've touched on autism awareness IT course and these are all um, coated with with mum examples, because then the mum or the learner, as you will know how, you know, the language we use in FE, the learner is more likely to engage, be retained and achieve their, their qualification. So that's interesting. So one of the things that we can sort of look at then as a, a group, and I'm saying this to my live learn lunches is, maybe a, a sort of piece for that then is if if this isn't available outside of London funded at the moment I wonder if there's some work we can do as a group around how do we make the resources we have more attractive to um as you've said sort of the positioning of content made engaging for for mom returners so it's something um I know Louisa and Deborah have put comments in they're saying it's really interesting but they're outside of London so they wouldn't be able to access it so I wonder if there's something that we can do as a group yeah. to think about some what can we do to make the interventions we have um more relevant for 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 returning moms so watch this space and remember, I'm the, surprised if you hear from me, guys, to, 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 to pull those together. And remember, you are able to um, pay as well. So we do have a sort of commercial arm if you wanted to pay for the training. I'd be more than happy to have a discussion um, about that. And the other point is if we have a big enough demand, like we have in Kent, then, of course, we can go to an organisation and say, would you fund this particular area? 
Um, so I'd be happy to have a chat with people. And if if we just think no, it's we can't because we're very you know we're we're niche, we're small, we're quite sort of boutique, and we're giving this great service. So I certainly don't want to spread myself too thinly. But if there's something we can do, you know, whether it's you know with Helen helping us, then we can have that conversation. I think sometimes it's just you know seeing what's right. Like. Yeah, let's. It's, we know it's important, and you know we know there's there's mums wanting to return everywhere, not just London. So let's see. I think that's a conversation for us to move yeah. forward. And obviously, with your experience, we can we can look at helping um, in different areas. So number six, we've we've still not gone to it. So number six is around tweaking job adverts to attract these skilled women, and you've put uh, an advertising on specific women returner job boards. Now this is something. I've not heard of like women return a job boards. It doesn't surprise me now I've read it, but it's not something I've ever thought of looking for. So are they, are these sort of regional or are they national and where would people go to find yeah, so them? So there's, there's um, regional ones and national. Um, there's a number of organisations that, and Facebook groups where women can actually, um, you know, employers can advertise and women can search for jobs as well. And don't forget, there's also, you've got your Indeeds and you've got all the ones that we will know about anyway. You can always search for part-time roles or flexible roles. Um, and as I touched on, if people wanted to advertise on our website, then they can. That's that's free if they're part of the GLA project. Um, that's that's not a problem. And obviously that, that goes out to our audience. Um, but I'm happy I can send across we've got some other organizations that we work with that provide a similar service some of them charge um, but obviously if their their reach is so much greater then that you know could be a, could work really well and just going back to tweaking the job adverts um, part of the the GLA funding we have is we've got a module on how to tweak the job advert just so it suddenly you know, gets the eyes of all of these these skilled women returners. And it could be as small as just putting the word flexible in there, putting the word hybrid in there, um, you know, open to discussions around term time. It can really just open the floodgates to some of these skilled women applying for the jobs. Um, you know, and if they're the right fit, if they've got the right work ethic, if they're, you know, committed, it could be that they might work two evenings a week, um, if you give them the school run and they can just, you know, be a fantastic asset to your to your company. Um, I think that's a really interesting point. We've got some comments that I'll share with you, um, Jane, but it's really interesting that when you said sort of term time, as we're at the start of the summer holiday, us mums that do the childcare arrangement, you think six weeks of trying to organise work and it makes a massive difference if you can be flexible over the summer. And, you know, every, it always seems to me like as a mum, the half terms come around so quickly. I'm like children in school. I know they are, but it feels like I'm constantly juggling that. So we've had some comments. Julie's put, it's worth Googling Shortress. They run things and also Homestar. I am in Essex and people on benefits get referred to the company I work for and we provide all of this funded. So that's fantastic. Thank you for that, Julie. Erica's put, there is an organisation that we work with in ba Bristol, Bath and Somerset called Women's Work Lab, who I recommend for those areas. I can also vouch that successful mums are fab for London provision. So that's oh, great to hear. Who's, who's Jenny Watts, is it? Pardon? Is that, is that Erica Watts? Yes, it is. Yeah. Hi, Erica. I didn't know you were on here. Yeah. And then Jenny has popped a link in there around um, women returner program jobs from Indeed um, on that website. So some great share in there. So we know that there are organisations organizations doing these and it's great that we can start to share those because we, you know, we know that that there is a need. Sorry, we've sort of hijacked a little bit there. Back to you, Jane. That's OK. And I think that's all really useful. I think the Shore Trust are great as well. I mean, I've worked with the Shore Trust before and they're a, they're a very good organisation. Um, and of course, we, we showcase the employers we work with. So another thing I think employers like, if they go on our job board, it's completely branded. So not only are they showcasing their vacancies, they will also be showcasing their, um, their product or service to an audience of mums, which a lot of them like, um, which is, you know, a, a posit can only be a positive thing. Um, well, so that's a really interesting point for the practitioners as well, isn't it, as a, as a selling point for when they're talking to employers on behalf of participants in that it is a really, it's progressive, it's a positive thing to do, and that they will be talking about them as a positive, progressive employer. Um, and, and it's, you know, it, it, it's, it can only be a good thing, can't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, yeah, you're then seen as you fall into the category of somebody that is inclusive, an organisation that's inclusive yeah. and wants to reach out to, to women because it's, you know, it's a really hot topic. Um, excuse the pun in terms of the menopause, but the menopause, women's well-being, um, women working flexibly, lots of people are talking about it and lots of people are benefiting from it as well. So it can be a, a really good, a good thing to do. So just before I move on to, I think it's the last slide, I'm just... Just to say that the three ladies on the screen, you can see um, we've got we've, the, the first lady, Aveen, she's, um, her daughter is actually really, she's into coding and her daughter's into coding and she came on our business startup course and um, she set up a, a coding organisation specifically for women um and she's doing well we just keep in touch with a lot of these mums as well they come back to us in fact they they come back as guest speakers and then talk to the other mums that run the course which is you know the best the best voice ever and then we've got emily in the middle emily actually she started up in crystal palace a organization called it takes a village and it was to support the community of women that have just had children and they might have been on their own or they might have had additional barriers um, so she brings these women together to support them. Um, and that's her business is doing really well at the moment. It's just growing and growing. Um, and then Regan from the cooking shed, she um, she started with us um, probably about eight, probably about six or seven years ago. And she runs the cooking shed. She's still running it now. And, um, you know, she did the hard work, but we gave her that platform to get her business off the ground with the practical steps you need to take to, to start start a business. Um, okay, so just going on to the, um, the funding, I've touched on this, so I don't need to talk about it a lot, but basically we've got the, the GLA initiative. If you are an employer or you know a London employer that would benefit from the menopause training, the women's wellbeing training and advertising on our website, along with the learning modules to become more flexible and hybrid, then just do, do get in touch. Um, and that's one of our learners, Tanaz. And she's got an art studio. She was one of our enterprise, our business startup ladies. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I mean, if you want to be more inclusive, fast forward to Wednesday, the 27th of July, everybody. If we if we met again in a year's time, you know, what, what have we all achieved? It might just be something little. It might be nothing at all. Or it might be something big. Um, but the next year will go really fast. Hopefully there won't be any more pandemic. So let's make the most of it. Grab it by, by the hands and um, yeah, do the best you can. And I might see you in a year's time, if not before. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for that. And I'm just sort of reflecting um, on some of the things that we've discussed during that session and what my takeaways will be for supporting people. And I do like the idea of like that fast forward a year and, and what will you have achieved or what would you have achieved with other people? Because it's so powerful, isn't it, to visualize success and to, to, to think about the changes that you will say. I've got a question for you just before we let you go because you're so experienced at working with mums and we, we sort of started off talking about the three C's at the start. Um, and we talked about career advice and childcare, we sort of focused on that. Sort of around that building confidence piece, do you have like a top tip that practitioners could take away of um, something simple you can do with moms to help build that confidence and to help them on that journey? Because once you've taken a couple of steps, it, it, it snowballs, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's making that leap. So what, what are the things that you find most impactful? So I think it's talking about the transferable skills and asking, you know, whether if there's two of you saying, OK, let, do you reckon we could get to 20 or maybe you want to say 15 or maybe 10 at first and then really exceed that. So um, and just say to the, the mum, OK, from when you wake up in the morning to when you fall asleep on the sofa at nine o'clock at night, what are all the tasks that you do throughout the day? And then equate those into the tasks that you would do in the workplace. So I think it's about the transferable skills. I think it's about staying in your own lane. Don't worry what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about going back to that career you had before. I mean, obviously, people's financial situations might be different. Um, but stay in your own lane. Do what's best for you and your babies at this given point. Um, and then I suppose the third thing is, you know, it might, it might be where do you want to be in a year's time, or it might just be where do you want to be in three months, something small. And hold the person accountable, even if it's, you know, why don't we have a phone call every other week? What would you like to achieve? Keep it small. Um, 
which those small steps will all be progress to get to where you want to be. So it's transferable skills, stay in your own lane and know where you're going. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Jane. What a great way to finish the session. So thank you very much. That's flown. I can't believe that we're nearly at the end of an hour already because that time has flown so quickly. So thank you very much for that. I will contact you around some of those resources we discussed um, because I'm sure that the people on the call will be contacting me. Um, you've got Jane's email address there for those that want to contact Jane. Um, direct and Jane, it would be wonderful to have you back to maybe have a, um, a session around um, the menopause resource pack and, and some of the advice that we can share there, if that's okay with you. So I can see lots of people, Sam, Jeanette, Shannon, saying thank you for a great session. Um, thank you from me as well. Thank you to everyone who attended. I always say this, you know, we couldn't do, we can't do these sessions without our wonderful facilitators that give us their time and without you all for attending. So thank you for that. Just to let you know before you do go about next week's session, um, next week we are joined by Paul Davini from Prospect Consulting and Training. And he, the topic we're going to be looking at is refining the art of employer engagement in an era of labour and skill sh shortages. I nearly got through that without stumbling over my words, but not quite, never mind. Um, so, yeah. It's on the Learning Network e-bulletin, the, the link for registering. So pop over to that um, and get yourself registered. Um, and I'm just going to read um, a couple more comments out for Jane before we let her go. Jenny said, thanks. Great session. I would love to run training for moms in the same style as you run. I'm up north and we'll have this as a goal for next year. Jenny, keep in touch with me because I think it's going to be one of our goals as well. And let's see if we can get a wider network out doing this specific training. And Sandra has said, Thank you. Really useful. And uh, I say ditto. Thank you. And I look forward to maybe we do. It won't be a Wednesday, will it? But maybe on the 27th of July, we need to try and email each other and tell each other what we've what we've um, what we've achieved. Tracy, I know Tracy's in the session. Tracy, put a note in for us to do that. Maybe we can remember to email out to everyone who registered and ask them that question and let Jane know. So thank you all. And thank you, Jane. Take care. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.